Welcome to Brentocast Season 2 with your host, Brent Bowers. Episode 53, Brentocast, February 3rd, 2024. And we are back after a week or so of activity since the last episode. I have been uh, a Star Wars proponent of the restaurant called Lovers and Legends, where I've been playing music a lot for the last couple of years. And uh, in recent times, I've taken over their social media and their booking because I just do that. I go and take over things. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I've been helping them with that. And um, I'll tell you what, the music scene is really making an impact at Loafers, just like it did at Hard Man Coast when I was running theirs. Um, and the restaurant is sort of seeing a new, I like to call it a new zeitgeist of interest. Um, people, they have a regular crowd for sure. But in addition to that, the music has brought in that extra little 25% of people that did not know about uh, such a cool place. And they are coming out consistently, which is exciting to see. You know, as, you know, my my end in it is that I really like going there, playing music there, eating there. It's a family-friendly place we can take Delilah and... Uh, we do eat out a lot, a lot more than I would like to, actually, but we do because of the work schedule, you know. And uh, having a place that's reliable, it just makes me wish they, were, wish they were open more days a week, which is great. And they have actually, on that note, started to do Wednesdays here and there, sort of a special thing. Like, for example, they're doing a special entertainment with my buddy Mark and uh, a special meal for, like, Valentine's couples and stuff like that. And then uh, they recently did like a Wednesday night special stew kind of a deal. You just go in there and pay one price. It's a single menu kind of a thing. And you have like dessert, salad, appetizer, that sort of thing. And uh, it was really good, man. I was like, God, like Wednesdays usually are that night that you just can't find anything around here. And the standard of service in Albemarle has fallen off so badly since COVID that it's become a real issue for those of us that dine out as a regular means of getting fed our supper every night and uh to see a place that kind of you know had some had some difficulty with getting the right employees for a while and things like that and you know see them hit their stride with the right crew and the cook the cooking and the food to me has been super solid the whole time it's just you know from here and there they couldn't get enough help or whatever and I mean, who knows? Who knows the machinations of running a restaurant? It's very complicated. I love how lay people that don't run restaurants love to talk about what it would take to fix it because none of us really know the ins and outs of it. But um, I do know this. If if no one knows about your place or if people have the impression that it is a private club, then that, that's going to hurt. And that's that's one of the things that I really strive to convince them that putting club on it on their Facebook was just a big mistake. And eventually they saw the light on that. And so now it's, we're referring to it as restaurant family restaurant, even on Facebook. And I'll tell you that has made a difference since I get the messages for there. We, people are always asking, Hey, is this a club or is it open to the public? And I'm like, come on down and check it out. It's totally open to the public. And, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's good. And it's really gratifying to see how quickly having a, music scene meaning you go on a friday night you get to hear karaoke once a month you get to go see an open jam which is a completely different vibe than like a booked artist it's just multiple people playing and then uh on saturday nights every saturday night you get to hear a different act and i mean not to put too fine a point on it but the way they were doing it before was kind of the way harmenko's was approaching it they had three or four people they liked and that's who they booked every month and literally i understand the temptation, because I am a booker, I understand the temptation to grab somebody you like. Let's just say Jack Burns, for example, great performer, always brings a good crowd. Uh, might be the same crowd in his case because he has a lot of family support, it seems like. But let's just say you book that guy every month. Well, you know, the Jack Burns crowd this month, actually, that's a terrible example because he does seem to have the same crowd a lot. But uh, anyway, uh, the point being, you want diversity. And, uh, you know, I played at Loafers every month for the last three years. 
And I realized that I, being a guy that doesn't have a huge draw because I do a lot of original music, but I do have, you know, like some people that will come to see me, particularly because of my, you know, being married to Nancy and she's somewhat of a town celebrity here and folks through the store that find out that I play music do come. And I have one or two groups that try to come every time that, that I play. And, but over time that falls off, they're like, well, we've seen this and he's doing kind of the same songs as last time. And so on and so forth. And it's just a hard pill to swallow as an artist, but that's just how it is. Um, the worst thing that ever happened to me in my own performing career with a band was that the guy that owned Harmenko's back in the day really liked us. And he played us four times as much as every other band to the point where nobody was going to come see us do those same 20 songs. And um, so, yeah, that's one thing I tried to approach. Now, there are people that we book more just because they're fantastic talent, but in general, and, and, you know, a lot of the acts that we book have historically been booked, you know, every month. Like, if we like them, we just book them out, right? But I've told them, you know, hey, don't take this personal. It has nothing to do with you. We're just trying to create a scene which has a variety. And at the end of the day, it's going to help you with your draw. It's going to help you with tips because people that are seeing you aren't the same people that saw you last time. And it's going to help us. So, you know, it's just like uh, some of those some of those uh, conservation methods like culling deer or an overpopulated population of any animal. It seems harsh on the surface, but then what you realize is you get a situation like in Baden where you have a massive overpopulation of deer and they're all small and you rarely see a big strong one uh, because it's just the nature of the beast, so to speak. Um, I don't know that that's a one-to-one comp, you know, comparison, maybe apples and oranges there, but the point being diversity creates a better music scene. And we've done that now that I've taken over booking and I can immediately in the first quarter see the difference instead of having one or two good nights. Now we're having two and three really good nights. Like I would say, I know they had a great Thursday night cause I was there. And I know they had a great karaoke night last night because I was there. Not because I was there, but I was there to witness it. And if they have a great night tonight, that's three great nights this week. I mean, like great nights, you know. Um, also happen to be running an awesome porterhouse steak special right now, which is like almost triple the size of the regular steak, which I already feel like is too big. But um, I know that's going to garner some interest. We put that out, of course. and uh, But it's just fun. But yeah, Jack will have a good crowd tonight. And so that, that means it's probably going to be three great nights this week, which is what we want every week. And then eventually that Wednesday night, those special uh, openings on Wednesday night. It's just, uh, it's uh, it's funny because like a lot of people were bemoaning the fact that they lost a particular crew of help back, back uh, I would say November, December of last year. And it was, oh no, how are you ever going to make it without this person and all this? And I'm like... You'll see. It'll turn around. And it did. So, super chuffed. Anywho, enough about the business. What have I been doing? Well, there's a bit of a change up with how, I guess, Eddie at Stug Records has been, been uh, I guess, doing business over the past, gosh, for me, 20 years. And he's talked to us about kind of switching over to his software and potentially upgrading our studio to be do, be able to do more of it. And I don't know if this is because of a pending retirement. I mean, I know that's definitely something that's on the horizon, but he did mention wanting to work on his music, and I get that, of course. But I guess it's going to be, mean less accessibility for Harrison and I and other acts that we produce at the studio, at least, well, I'm talking about Snug Record Studio, at least for the immediate future. And I guess that means... <clears throat> we got to really kind of bring our game up to level and potentially switch to the industry standards pro tools. I mean, I didn't go that way in the past because of monetary issues with the software and the plugins, but now I don't know. It seems like everything in the recording world just keeps pushing me in that direction <clears throat> and not to put too fine a point on it. I need to do the kind of editing that Eddie does. I need to be able to do that. So, you know, that's, um, even though I lament that there's any kind of limit in the access to Snug Records, which is my favorite place to record, it is time for me and Harrison to evolve our technical ability on the recording engineering side. We're doing awesome on the other side. 
the creative side and the playing side has just never been better. <clears throat> but I have had to become a little more discerning about clients that I take on. And I recently just kind of tried out a new client that I thought I was going to work with. And, you know, after a session, a practice session, sort of, I decided that I wasn't going to. And it's funny because I think he sort of picked up on that energy and it felt kind of almost like a mutual decision. Although I know in my mind, when I made my decision, um, it it's good. It's good. I got to, I got to really kind of focus on <clears throat> producing acts that I'm excited about, not just doing it to help somebody else out, which has kind of been my modus operandi. If a person came to me and said, Hey man, could you help me producing this? And I'll, you know, I really appreciate it, et cetera. And here's what I'm trying to do. And if, if those words were right and the humility was right and the approach was right, you know, it was never about money. It never has been, although it needs to be a little more about that because equipment is expensive. But, um, you know, it's just a matter of capturing my imagination, really. And once that's done, I'm like, hey, you know, Harrison has been game to do everything I've tried to bring to him. I'm sure we can help you and that sort of thing. And, you know, but just some people really don't understand what production is. And, you know, I've worked with some clients through that to where, you know, there was a light at the end of the tunnel and we, we ended up coming to a great, you know, collaboration at a certain point. But then when you kind of have to go back further down the chain to people that don't understand what producing a record is, you know, there's you, it gets a little tedious and there's definitely times when I'm like, hey, I just really don't want to do that part of it. Let's just skip to the good part, as that meme likes to say. <clears throat> But, um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, I'm optimistic about the future of recording. Um, I have finally talked my buddy Mark into doing some performing at, uh, Loafers and man, he floored me last night with his, it was probably the best karaoke performance I have ever seen to Billy Joel's Sings from an Italian Restaurant, which is a super tough one to sing. Um, and I imagine play, but like that song is like a, unmitigated work of genius and it just has so many different things vocally going on in it and dang man he really crushed it have a great video of it on the uh, loafers and legends restaurant fan page if you want to check it out but uh wow it was i was truly impressed i'm glad i videoed it and i'm excited about doing an album of his material at some point i think it's just kind of getting his passion focused on it i know he's running a business and whatnot but i uh, really like that guy and he does a great job and that's the kind of people I want to work with people that in some way, shape or form level me up and, you know, excite me about music and, you know, it is what it is. So Delilah went with us on the open mic night and, uh, had a great time. Uh, Mark and his wife sat next to us and we, uh, we just had a good time, you know, uh, watching the open mic players. I played a little bit and Delilah had some ice cream and it really got sugared up. And by the end of the night, she's up there on a stool, kneeling up high on a stool like dancing beside me while I play, and it's, I got pictures of it, it's hilarious, so it was really funny, um, <clears throat> then, uh, let's see, yesterday was uh, the beginning of a new series of reflexology sessions we're going to do with uh, the folks over at GHA, which is like the adult autism care facility here, and that place is, I keep talking about it, it's incredible, like they just really did an amazing job on the design and building of that place, and the staff are all great. I always feel so humble and grateful even to be able to contribute to that in any way every time we go. But last, but every other Friday, we're going to be working there for a couple hours after work and uh, doing reflexology for the folks that live there. But yesterday, as we go in, now they've always had goats, and I think they've got a miniature donkey out in this really nice double fence paddock area. Yesterday, I go up and immediately notice there's a great Pyrenees laying there. Big boy. Walk right up to him, and he's got to be, like, one of the friendliest dogs. Uh, now, he's on the other side of a four-foot fence. He immediately gets up to greet me, jumps up, puts his paws on the top. I go over there to him, and it's just like a love fest. As soon as I get my hands into that thick carpet of fur they have, I'm just like, whoa, this is an extra lovable dog. And I don't know, I just I had this, like, moment. I was like, man, this needs to be my dog. <laughs> This needs to be my dog. And then there's a female out there, and she comes over, and she's lovely, too, you know. So I loved on them for about five minutes, and then after we did the service and stuff, I came back out, and I loved on them. And I was like, 
believe this. Next time Uncle Brento comes, there will be dog treats. Those dogs are super cool. Gosh, it makes me want one. Uh, on the flip side, hey, uh, my, my, my own dog, Cooper, has been turning back into a Houdini. I got here just as he got loose the other night, and he would have killed my chickens. Fortunately, the reinforcements I made to the coop gave me that like two minutes down there. Him trying to rip those reinforcements off the bottom so he could get through gave me like two minutes to tackle him, get the choke collar, and then get him back up here. And then last night, as I, I, I had tried to, I felt like the la it had not been broken. The latch just came loose. It's one of those typical thumb latches that you see on a dog uh, chain or leash. Well, um, I tried, I just felt like maybe that one was defective. So instead of latching it, I looped it through the choke collar, ran through itself, and then connected it back to the cable. I go out last night and once again, oh, actually early this morning, I hear him like kind of barking. It wasn't like a super distress, but I could tell he wasn't happy. So I go out. Typically he's inside. So I guess Liam let him out last night because it's not cold. He's on the porch and uh, I immediately feel that his choke collar is too tight. And so he had spun around and spun around and spun around, I guess, and tightened it up or whatever. So uh, that concerned me. So I had to bring him in and shut the door. Managed to get that thing off of him, but once again, the latch had come loose of the part that's supposed to clip clip on. So I don't know if that's failing, but I flipped that cable around, put that part on the other end. Now I'll have the other part, and I'm, again, going to try something fancy, but just <clears throat> hope that it works for the two hours it takes me to go get another, you know, two cables and maybe some sort of different kind of latching system. But it's it's been tough to keep those chickens alive, man. I really don't like having to deal with how Nancy acts when sort of we have these mishaps where they, we lose chickens. She gets real upset with me and, you know, this is preventable. I just have to find the right combination of countermeasures and the electric fence. Once again, that's a waste of 260 bucks. That, that collar that comes with it, um, uh, when he was down there, he had that collar on. I look over, I can see it firing, but it's not shocking him. And I look at it, and one of the pegs, one of the studs has already fallen off. I haven't had that thing six months. I, he hasn't been wearing it, but for like three months. So they're just garbage. I'm never buying another one of those. But a guy, when I was over there, told me that if you get the shock collar that you can trigger with a remote, you can take him down there, and when he starts acting up, you say no. You hit the button. The uh, shock collar beeps six times. Do, 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 do. If he, and if he doesn't. <clears throat> change his behavior in that six beeps, you let him have it. He said it only took his dog one time of getting shot with that thing to break him from wanting chickens. So I'm going to try that. That's an expensive solution as well. But I mean, at this point, I'm, I'll try anything. I, I really want to keep my chickens, but I love my dog. Dog is like family. The chickens are like guests. Nancy don't quite understand that. I'd get rid of every chicken and never think about keeping chickens again before I would... Get rid of my dog, period. But, you know, got to live here trying to keep mama happy. But anyway, Delilah had a real time this week. She was super cute as always. And we had her, uh, let's see, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday. We did not have her Friday night, and we'll have her tonight. So this is going to be a regular week, which will be five nights, which is, it's funny because we've been getting along so good. And just, she's been, when she's not sick, she's really a joy to be around. So she's. She's been super cute all week and not much of a hassle at all. And I um, actually found myself missing her last night when we were out at, at Loafers and Peg's grandchildren were there, that her buddies. And I um, I was like, man. And the one, the littlest one, Charlie, they're, they're, they're super cute. But like, they were just good, good, god, god. They were like really paying attention to me and Nancy. Like, like they expected Delilah to pop out at any second. And it was really funny. Um, but anyway, uh, Delilah would have had a great time. But they... They're here this weekend, so we'll probably take them somewhere around tonight. But we'll see uh, if she's not sick or anything. But, um, yeah, that was kind of our week. Um, I don't think we're going to be running off to uh, Thomasville this weekend because uh, we've done that a lot lately, and I need a little bit of a break from all that driving. And f Sunday, I think, would be on the schedule to have Harrison down to Secret Studios for a writing session. I was thinking we might pop over to uh, Mark's house and try to do something 
on his Baldwin baby grand piano. Take the remote recording set up over there. Um, I will say that my power speaker situation has been working out great. The mixing board that I got has made it possible to do a lot more, particularly with regards to having guests plug in. And uh, also, we um, I got a second one for use at, you know, so I don't have to carry one back and forth uh, for use at my studio. And uh, I'm thinking I might even work that one into the act in the summer and try to do some stuff outside because uh, that space is almost ready. And I could see that really dragging people in from the festivals. So um, that's something I definitely want to program for. Uh, got to see my buddy Ron yesterday. Speaking of Ron and the V Hill Brothers, okay, it's back on. I'm releasing their album again, apparently. Uh, I'm going to shoot for, gosh, I guess next week. So I'm going to start the release work today, and hopefully everything will be out within two weeks. Yeah, yeah. There was some back and forth where they thought they were going to do that, and I, I tried, to, I guess I did a poor job of explaining the technicality of it because. You know, I would say it's not super technical, but if you find starting a YouTube channel or a Facebook page technical, then this is going to be technical for you. But um, anyway, excited to share that album as well. Excited to work on the two more albums that I have to release before I even get to the Bowers Foreman work, which, by the by, we are supposed to have our final mix review session on the 29 songs we've been working on for the last two and a half years next Friday night. So after that, hopefully we'll be working toward three releases, maybe. We'll see how it goes. But um, yeah, that's what's going on this early Saturday morning. And I uh, hope you guys have a lovely week. As always, thanks for listening to Brento Cast. We'll be back when there's more to share. <laughs>